Hi, I'm Kaja Bayou of Thomas & Blake's Auction Galleries, and I'd like to welcome you to our summer sales on the 9th, 10th, and 11th of July at 11 o'clock. Uh, we are very excited to have live bidding on the 10th and 11th. Anyone that would like to have a seat in the gallery for the 10th and 11th should call ahead for reservations. If you are not fortunate enough to join us for those days at our sales, you can bid online, you can be on the phone, or you can leave a bid with one of our people at the desk. We have a two week preview starting June 28th. Check our website for details. So lot 2023 is on Saturday when we're doing all the country Americana stuff. Got a house call over in Western Maine and this was out in the gentleman's tool room filled with all kinds of tools and nuts and bolts. It's a nice early American moss green painted pine, two part country store cabinet. Wonderful thing, it almost has a very Shaker-esque feel to it, the way everything's proportioned so beautifully and handcrafted, especially with these sort of button turn knobs, which is what the Shakers used a lot in their stuff. Look at the dovetail work on this thing all handcrafted in pine. Whoever made this was a craftsman, all beveled wood underneath here, beveled uh, on the underside. And in here, what's interesting is you would have had a sample of the seeds that were for sale. You'd have a packet of the seed packet in here and it would say, you know, like corn seeds or wheat seeds or whatever. And that was sort of your advertising of what was in here. And then you'd take a scoop and you'd scoop out the seeds and you'd put it in a little paper bag when they had paper bags. And down, down here, you could have had all kinds of things. Again, the construction of this thing is beautiful. It's in fine condition. When I told him the estimate, the guy decided to take the nuts and bolts and tools out of it and gave us it to sell. It's estimated 7,500 to 10,000 and I'd think awfully hard before you'd get a, a, a carpenter or a builder to build this today for that little bit of money, especially the wonderful age and patina of this thing. We should probably get some seed packets and put it in there. Wouldn't that be cool? Anyway, I love this thing. A very nice piece. It's one of the finest architectural or country store pieces we've had in years. This is an extremely rare carousel figure. It's in, it looks like it's in its second paint. These, because these were outside in these big carousels, uh, every few years they would paint them with new paint. That's why a lot of times you'll see multiple layers and very thick paint. These are all carved and painted wood. They were done around the 1900s and 1920s. This is a full standing lion. It has a carved green parrot on the saddle. And of course he's got a wonderful glass, big uh, glass eyes and he has his tongue out as any happy or hungry lion would have. This one is an outside ring. That's why it's jeweled on one side. These are all faceted colored glass jewels. And you'll see the green parrot with the glass eye and jewels, jeweled banding around his um, rump here. We had a custom mahogany platform made for him. And of course it has a brass bar like they would have had in the carousel originally. So this is a wonderful carved giraffe carousel figure or menagerie figure as we should say. Again, from a, a menagerie series, all hand carved and painted, has little glass eyes on them. Interesting that they used a, again, a green headed parrot on the seat. And this one, we also had a custom made base for it with the brass rail that would have been similar to what they had on the carousel. A lot of the carousels, when they were originally made in the early 19th century, were for adults. People always think they were for children, but they were not. They were made for adults. The size of it almost makes you think that it would have been for a child rather than an adult, whereas the lion is much bigger. The saddle is bigger, the proportions are bigger. So this could have been especially made for a child's carousel. So lot 2033 is this full bodied copper, blown copper and gilded pig weather vane. A fun little guy with a curlicued tail applied ears. The eyes are actually uh, hammered out from the inside as like, uh, like a repose. And this one is estimated at two to 3,000. Still has traces of gilding. You notice how they punched out the little holes for the snout. Little curve here, nice little sculptural effect here. 
curve of the head, muscles on the uh, legs down here and out here. Nice little folds from the fat in the pig. Anyway, cool little guy. The weather vane market is very strong. We have eagles, we have pigs, we have all kinds of great weather vanes this trip. A bull, horse, several good weather vanes in this sale. Third lot 3024 is this hand carved and painted figural barber chair seat. It's on an early 1920s white enamel and nickel, uh, nickel plated ring base. And you'd set the child in here and there was straps here so the child wouldn't fall out. And it's all hand carved, again with glass eyes, probably carved by a carousel carver. What's interesting about the carousel figures is a lot of the carvers were Jewish immigrants. They were, the, they were the vast amount of carvers of carousel figures, figureheads for ships, and things of that nature. And cigar store, native cigar store figures were uh, carved by Jewish immigrants with a tremendous talent for sculpting. And these are, these are basically fabulous wood sculptures that would fit into the category of Americana or folk art. Again, this would have been carved probably in the 1920s the figure, the base is probably a little newer and they set it on that base. It's a hydraulic uh, base. But a wonderful little figure right there. But one of the many cigar cutters we have is this carved ivory lion. It has gem set garnet eyes set in silver and it's mounted in, uh, in polished, looks like polished steel or chrome and uh, estimate at five to 700. But if you're a cigar aficionado and you want a really good countertop or tabletop cigar cutter, lot 1184 on Friday is for you. I think we have five other, uh, four or five other great cigar cutters in, in that sale. Uh, we got a house call over to Belfast to an estate of a family that we had worked with many for many years. Uh, these are, are by Tiffany and Company, and these are all. This is all hand represented work in sterling silver, and they're marked Tiffany and Company on the side. These are from about 1890, and they are all silver, sterling silver candle holders. And these are lot uh, 30, uh, 3008, and these are on Sunday, in the sale on Sunday the 11th. And these are eight to twelve hundred dollars. They're beautiful candlesticks. When we got them, they were totally black. They hadn't been polished. They were found in the attic. And they hadn't been polished for years and years and years. But the craftsmanship on these things, you look at you look here, it's got this uh, this leaf design here. It's what they call a water leaf design. And it has roses, repose roses. Repose has to be done from the back of the silver. So all that design is hammered into the back of the silver to give you this protruding design. It has a gadroon border on the top. And you'll notice these little slots, so when you put the candles in, they have a tendency, they'll stay more solid. These are interesting, because they had a presentation to Ethel Boyd, October 27, 1891. This is an original Tiffany Studio desk lamp. We have the desk set that matches this lamp and the picture frame. It's called the abalone pattern that will, first off, let's start with the shade. These are all molded pieces of glass to look like folded linen. We have a green one, a white one, and a amber one. They all were found in the same attic in New Hampshire on a call. It has gilded bronze fittings, but what makes this even rarer is all inlaid with abalone shell down the column and on the base and on the top of the lamp, those are all little car carved pieces of abalone shell on these. The linen fold lamp shades are very hard to find in great condition, but we have three of them. This one's in the best condition. The other two have some damages on them, but very, very rare to find. This was in a dark attic. <laughs> we went in, you never know what you're gonna find. And all of a sudden I look over and there's this jug with this rattlesnake wrapped around it. It's so realistic at first glance in a very dim lit room, one would think it was a rattlesnake. 
It's all, it's all sculpted out of pottery, and this is all one piece. How in the world they ever did it? They even left a hole where the venom would come out of the, of the rattlesnake's mouth. And of course, his little rattling tail is all sculpted too. Wonderful piece right there. This was found in the same collection as the um, lion, a little child's lion barber seat. This, uh, they also had a bunch of uh, face jugs from the same place. And these were uh, mostly influenced by Southern uh, pottery makers. So this one is made by Michael and, or Michael or Melvin Crocker out of Georgia. And the estimate on this one is six to $800. You gotta be really talented to know how to make this for that little bit of money. And the condition is amazing. The fact that these fangs are still perfect and sharp is amazing. Is that wet in there? Ah! Oh! <laughs> Had to do it, Bill. Oh, it's signed on the bottom, look. Signed right on the bottom and dated. 1993 this was made. A very fine piece of 20th century folk art pottery influenced by the early southern uh, crockery makers or, or uh, pottery makers. So lot 1110 is an example of modern technology in aluminum. This is a called a Fleet's Spinal Demonstrator Model Number 9. It's a wall-mounted chiropractic training device in adjustable cast aluminum brass and rubber on a black lacquered mount with engraved tag. <clears throat> Manufactured by the Truman Fleet, San Antonio, Texas, circa 1939. Dr. Truman Fleet was the creator of the concept therapy approach to chiropractic treatment. And all of these move. Every piece is an integral piece, all separately cast and made and formulated to graduate down like a real spine right down into the hip bones and the tailbone, all the way down. And these are, <clears throat> these rubber pieces here would be the <clears throat> veins or arteries that go into your spine. Because this would be the back of your skull and it's all fully adjustable, beautiful condition. This came in on free appraisal day. Came in on free appraisal day. And, very, and they're quite valuable. This one's estimated at four to 6,000. It's in beautiful condition, beautiful condition. Lot 3034 is a wonderful painting by the renowned main painter, Waldo Pierce. He lived in New York, Maine and Massachusetts, but mostly Maine. He was born in 1884, died in 1970, unfortunately. Great friend, <coughs> great friend of the great writer Hemingway. They were buddies and a lot of the paintings have Hemingway in it. This is a wonderful painting of the young girl in red with lollipop. March 14th, 1967, oil on linen, initial and dated, low right, signed, entitled, and dated on the back of the picture. She's seated in an early Hitchcock armchair in the artist's studio. This most likely was uh, done in his studio in Searsport, Maine. And this one's estimated at three to 4,000, but we've had his paintings have brought 10, 15, 20, 30,000 a piece throughout the years. Uh, I just think this is an interesting picture. The, one of the reasons you can tell it's in his studio because you see these other canvases leaning against the wall of his studio. And he had stuff, his studios were packed with objects and art pieces and fragments of things everywhere in his studio. So 2004 is at the start of the Saturday sale, which starts at 11 o'clock. So this will be sold about 11, 10, this will be on the block has a custom made case to protect it. That's all done in whalebone and ivory. These are fr these French prisoner warships. This one I think has 74 guns flying a British flag, but look at the carved figurehead on the front. It has a female figurehead on the front and the uh, simulated lights in the back galleon. <clears throat> exquisite model. These are early 19th century. And this is a Royal Navy ship of the line, Napoleonic War era model. Look at the, look at the end where the captain's quarters is, better known as the stern. All those lines are hand, hand laid, in, <clears throat> laid in. 
All the cannons are handmade. All the planks of uh, whalebone and ivory down the side, those are all little brass fasteners that have to be used to make this thing. It's absolutely amazing. Over in Alma, Maine, we walked in and saw all this great contemporary American folk art. Uh, 1033 is on Friday and all these things will be sold, all the uh, contemporary folk art are gonna be sold on Friday. But wonderful handmade, hand designed, painted and carved wood decorated piece. This one is wonderful with the sun and the bluebirds. And the bluebirds decorating this pedestal. That mirror is fun with a saying on it. And they, we, uh, most of them have the names of the maker in the catalog, or the, catalog, the maker or designer in the catalog. I try not to get too close, he said. From a distance, almost everything looks real. And of course, this, th this piece in the corner is really wonderful. These are all carved wood and tin and painted flowers in this woven vase, which is incredible how they did that. And it comes on this great painted and carved pedestal. That's lot 1032. Some of the other pieces of this very Alice in Wonderland uh, like winged cabinet with a question mark on it. That's, this is all from the same house in Alma. Wonderful, whimsical collection of this house. Look at this great cabinet, Bill. Every piece is all by different designers and uh, artists. Wonderful little cabinet. Be great for you know keeping jewelry and stuff in. Matter of fact, I think it had jewelry in it when we got it. And of course, this look at this wonderful grandfather clock with the face on it. Time waits for no one. It's so true. There's a time and place for all things. Once upon a time, there was no time, and so on and so forth. Love stands the test of time. Look at these chickens. Look at these. And this lady had the most wonderful, fun stuff. How about a sunflower as a lamp? And this wall hanging cabinet, it has a mirror in it. And it also has a carved eye in the middle. God only knows what's under here. Let's see. Oh, a little carving. With a face inside here. Whoever made these things, very clever, very talented uh, artist. Another mirror. But this stuff is so fun. I, we expect to see a lot of interest in this stuff, and most of it's one of a kind, one on one off type of stuff. 1197 is a masterpiece of a music box. It is a <clears throat> multi tune large Swiss music box. These have incredible sound. When you look at the <clears throat> when you look at the brass cylinders with all the pins, this had to be the, this had to be the predecessor of computers. When you think about how somebody could design that and make that without a computer, it's amazing. Originally there would have been a little um, cardboard piece here that had the names of all the tombs that this would that can play. <clears throat> Beautiful inlaid case with music. It's all marquetry inlaid with musical instruments. It has a tambourine and other instruments in it. But listen to the sound of that. This would have been made around 1880, 1890 in Switzerland. Now it's switching tunes. This is probably an eight or 12 tune machine. It's sad that we don't have the tablet because it's actually it's told you the names of the, the songs and the composer. The music is coming from this, Bill. 
So these steel teeth are all adjusted to make different sounds. And those little tiny ends of these teeth hit these little pins and that makes, creates the sound. Can you imagine being smart enough to figure, how to do, figure out how to do that? Oh, see, it tells you which tune it's on. So it's an eight tune box and it's on tune number six. Oh, perfect. To a perfect ending. So a box like that is two to three thousand, lot eleven ninety seven on Friday. On Sunday is this rare carved and painted hippocampus made by the Morris Philadelphia Toboggan Company. So in Greek mythology, a hippocampus was a sea creature that was half horse, half seahorse. Uh, it has uh, green glass eyes, fish scale saddle, acanthus leaf mane, short wings back with the saddle, mounted on a rolling stand with tail resting on the floor. It's 67 inches long, it's 62 inches high, and it is a wonderful example of a fantasy carving carousel figure. Again, this would have been considered a menagerie figure rather than your standard horse. And this is an outside row figure. That's why it is so wonderfully carved everywhere. It's in beautiful condition. It was restored at great expense. The carvings on this are, are wonderful. They have the, the deep set, insetted glass eyes, the flared nostrils, the open mouth with his little sort of billy goat uh, beard here. <coughs> And they carved sort of uh, almost like fish form hoofs. But an a very interesting fantasy piece. Almost looks like a character you'd see in, what, The Little Mermaid or something like that.